Hey everyone, we're at the Adobe booth here at NAB 2014. Uh, I have Jason Levine here. We've got some exciting new features being added to uh, the CC, the Creative Cloud, uh, cloud of awesome apps. Uh, so uh, let's just go over. I wanted to kind of talk about what's happening with the integration between Premiere and After Effects. Can you give me a little bit of what's going to happen there? Yeah, so what we're basically revealing at the show this week is some really amazing new integration that has been a long, long-standing request, particularly from editors. So it's something that we're calling live text templates. And I think you mentioned kind of doing a similar workflow today where you are creating lower third graphics, um, you export them, and then bring that sort of export into Premiere. And then if you need to make changes, of course, your editor, who may not be familiar with After Effects, relies on you to make those changes, re-export, re-import. Now, through this cool new feature, Live Text Templates, um, you can create the, the template lower third. There's a simple checkbox in After Effects which tells Premiere this is a live, editable template. And now the editor inside Premiere can literally edit that text, whatever fields you allow to be editable, and that's simply a matter of locking or unlocking the layers in After Effects. And that's it. They never have to go into AE. So it's a very simple way to integrate things like lower thirds. The editor's doing his or her work. They can change, swap text out as it's needed, and just do an export. They never really have to go into After Effects. So there's amazing flexibility in AE for the animator and the person who's generating this and creating right. these. But as an editor who doesn't, or maybe isn't as comfortable modifying After Effects projects, they no longer have to, so they can do Especially that with something with a lot of layers, more complex animation. Absolutely, and, you've got, and if you've got a lot of pre comp things, it can, you know, where do they find the text layer? Maybe you have it buried several, right. several levels deep, so they, they don't have to deal with that anymore. All right, so what happens if uh, you pull in the comp into a Premiere, and uh, you know, you've got already a couple in there, what happens if you need to change the color scheme or if you need to tweak part of the animation? Right. Is, that, is it all procedural and updates? So that, so that of course, would be on the After Effects side and that leverages, again, a similar, right. like if you're familiar with our dynamic linking technology. Right. So those kinds of changes, anything on the graphical side, you're still going to be doing in After Effects. This is truly for text, right. but any animations that you have applied to text, anything on the text itself that is animated, and of course, every animated part of that comp continues to be animated and scrubbable inside of Premiere. Yeah, I also heard that there's uh, some changes with masking and tracking in between the two programs, so tell me about that. Yeah, so this is probably, um, again, long-standing request to be able to have masks in Premiere Pro. Um, what's cool about this is that now you have masks on every effect in Premiere. So you can apply, you know, you can apply a, a, an effect filter, you can mask anything, and then, of course, you can track it. So we're leveraging the mask tracking capabilities that we introduced uh, in the October release of After Effects CC with the rigid mask tracker. You can now mask and track with effects in Premiere, and then those can be dynamically linked into After Effects and edited further. Okay. So it's this, again, this sharing of technologies, more integration. People have been asking for this for a long time, specifically just to have masks in Premiere, and now yeah. to have them on every effect is so nice. And it's yeah, just I was getting tired of using garbage masks, yeah, trying to do sure, something, and sure. then the, having it on effects is great. Having it on effects is great, and now being able to translate that into After Effects is great too. And yeah. also, we've done several changes in After Effects regarding using masks in the tracker, whereas previously you would have had to have used an adjustment layer to that mask. Right. Now you actually have isolated effects that can be tied to the mask as well, similar to the way it functions in Premiere. Right. So no adjustment layer is needed. You you know, you know want to mask, uh, mask out a license plate in After Effects. <clears throat> you drop on a mosaic. You draw the mask. <clears throat> and you essentially now have composition options where you can say, OK, tie this effect to that mask and you're done, and that's it. Awesome. So it's it's so awesome, it saves time, it saves a lot of you know previous pre-comping that you would have had to have done. Um, it's just wonderful. And again, the fact that you can start it in Premiere, send it over to After Effects, and continue to work, it right. really continues the story of integration that we've been telling. For a yeah, long there's time. a lot of times where it's just, I just need to do something simple, I really wish I had mass functionality, don't have to open After Effects right. and link it. Right, so, so. again, it's, it comes back to a lot of the editor requested features, Good. but still giving, giving some love on the After Effects side as well. Yeah. All right, and uh, here you have a couple features coming to Audition as well. Yeah, so this is pretty exciting. So uh, at last, we have uh, lots of multi-channel related options now in Audition. So in terms of export, we've added uh, Dolby Digital, Classic AC3, and Dolby Digital Plus, which is very nice. Um, we've also added the ability now to create files with any number of channels. So you can build four channels, six, you know, a, a 7.1, an 11, a yeah. 10.2, whatever, however many channels you want. <clears throat> and what's nice in Audition is not only do you have these files with multiple channels that you can work with, but you can actually edit and master 
multi-channel files in our waveform view. So okay. it's not just like a global normalize or a global limiter or global compression. Um, you can individually select each channel of that interleave file oh, and process nice, it independently nice. and then export it out again. So lots of flexibility there. And then a lot of just simple but very user-friendly UI changes. Um, <laughs> done some things with color, col colorization of tracks in the multi-track, the ability to sort of lock a track height minimized and then freely zoom others so the ones that you want minimized stay minimized. Nice. Okay. Simple Good. stuff like that, but it's yeah. when you use it frequently, if you want to keep things locked before, everything would be zooming and we heard from many customers that that wasn't how they wanted it to function. So now you have that flexibility. And again, it ties very beautifully into Premiere Pro. Yep. Um, and then in terms of export, because you mentioned export, we've also got a lot of new export things in Adobe Media Encoder, including um, DCP export, okay. which is, again, request for some time now, uh, as well as uh, AS11 for our uh, broadcast corporations in Europe and UK who are standardizing okay. on AS11, and lots of other little things under the hood. So great stuff coming in this reveal that we're showcasing here today, and even more stuff as part of the Creative Cloud experience. Yeah, then uh, tell me a little bit about Adobe Anywhere as well. Yeah, so Anywhere, of course, now uh, we've been, I think we initially premiered it here at, uh, at NAB. I'm forgetting how long ago it was yeah, already. Yeah, well. um, <clears throat> So uh, this time around, we're showcasing some new integration with After Effects, uh, with Prelude for ingest, with Speed Grade, and then, of course, also showcasing this new Adobe Anywhere iPad app. So it's collaboration without boundaries. Um, it's really speaking to this notion of this the new way of editing, the new way of collaboration, the new way of finishing. And uh, we're so excited to really showcase it here. We had a great showing back at IBC in September, and there's even more new goodness to showcase here. So um, it's this, you know, the whole mantra of Creative Cloud is this, this, this idea of continuous innovation. And this is truly what we're doing. And uh, you know, as as cameras and things evolve, I mean, we were the first to have native 6K Dragon playing in Premiere Pro back in September, yeah. right off the timeline. Uh, and as more formats come and more things happen, this is what we're able to do with everything kind of being based around CC, around the Creative Cloud. Oh, and I should also mention, coming to After Effects regarding CC, we've also now got Cooler integration coming. So if you use Cooler and you can take snapshots, create swatches even on your iPhone in the Cooler app. Okay. You've got now a Cooler panel which can synchronize two Cooler swatches in the Cloud. Um, and you also got Typekit support. So as a compositor, graphics designer, looking for new fonts, font inspiration. You've now got Typekit support and After Effects in Premiere Pro. And you know, Typekit ships with over now, over 900 fonts. About a third of those are available for desktop use, but all of them are available to you as a Creative Cloud member. So Great. it's really flexible, awesome. Typekit's amazing, and it's all part of your membership. All right, when it comes to color grading, I hear there's also some changes uh, in Premiere and also speed grade. Can you talk about those as well? Yeah, so it's great. So now we have Master Clip uh, master effects support, master clip effects support uh, in both Premiere Pro and Speedgrade. So basically, okay. common workflow: you've got a, a long-form clip, you subclip it a bunch of times, um, and you want to treat or grade or add a LUT to those. Well, previously, each subclip would require its own effect in Premiere right. and similarly in Speedgrade. So now you have this notion of master clip effects, where you could drop a LUT on, say, the master clip that sourced all those subclips, and that's it. One time, one right. process. Okay. It ripples through to any instance of a subclip in that timeline. A lot less control V, control C. All yeah, that. yeah. And you've also got new support. You've got new scopes, uh, new standard broadcast scopes uh, uh, in, in speed grade as well. You've okay. also got a lot more uh, Premiere-like functionality in the timeline. Rear mirrors for more. <laughs> Mirrors Premiere more, <laughs> that's hard to say. Yeah. Um, and this, again, this integration in Titan, of course, and direct link, just improve direct link, so being able to send your entire timeline from Premiere Pro right into speed grade, do your grade, send it back. Um, just, yeah, amazing, amazing amounts of flexibility. Does that mask, those master clip effects uh, transfer over to speed grade when yes. you do them? Okay, and you're able to disable them, re-enable them? Yes, and that's something new also, is that you can now also disable Lumetri added effects from Premiere in speed grade. Previously, okay. you could not, so that's very cool. Great. So there has been some negativity uh, from the community regarding Creative Cloud because it's kind of changed uh, the, you know, the previous uh, business system that you were doing before. You know, you had your main releases, and now you're it's subscription based. So could you comment a little bit on why that's advantageous? Absolutely. So the reality is, in the boxed world, um, we were 18 to 24 months in between releases. Right. That's what everybody was familiar with. That's how it worked. Well. Ten years ago, that was okay. We didn't see the kind of rapid exponential development in technology, particularly in video, and that's whether we're dealing with cameras themselves, the codecs that they need, 
the, the resolution of these new formats. Um, we simply couldn't wait 18 months, 24 months for a new the release anymore. just getting faster and faster. It's getting faster and faster. Though. So first and foremost, the Creative Cloud allows us to develop in an agile fashion. As things change, as things develop around us, we can build those features in and we can update them. They can be updated in the Creative Cloud and they're available to you as soon as they're done. Right. So, I mean, this is really one of the main benefits. And if you look at from June of last year until even now, we've literally had hundreds and hundreds of updates several hundred updates yeah, yeah. across all the applications in CC since June. You can squash a bug right away and everything like Absolutely, that, yeah. and again, if you turn to the community where we did several updates at the end of last year and certain things, people responded and we were able to respond to those things. So, um, yes, it's a change for some and maybe it's it's not ideal for them now. The other thing is that um, being with being a Creative Cloud member also gives you access to so much more. So we mentioned right. Typekit, right. we mentioned things like obviously storage, things like uh, sharing and collaboration using Adobe Story, mm -hmm. but also just the tie-in with all the applications together and the flexibility, especially if you're in a post-production environment, um, you're working with freelancers, you know, you can assign right. licenses to a freelancer, the job is over, you can claw Makes back. Makes all that management easier. Makes all that management so much easier. Not to mention that just at a fundamental level, you no longer have the limitation of Mac or PC. And that may seem like a trivial thing, but again, you know, right. you used to have to buy a Mac box or a PC box. Now right. we don't care. Even the installation process is one click now. There's no unpacking DMG files or yeah. zips. It just happens and it happens in the background. So um, I think it will. St there's still more education to be done, but ultimately, this is what benefits the customer. Things change, I mean, and I, I said it before, Red Dragon 6K. Right. Well, if we had released in June, Dragon happened after that, it would be, if we were in the old right, cycle, you're waiting. we'd yeah. be 2015 until we saw that. Well, now we, ha they ha we had it right away. So it really allows us to respond, to be agile, to give people what they need, and that's across every application, right? I mean, as, as rapidly as video is growing, it's happening in design, it's happening yep. in the web, um, and we need to be able to, to, to be able to develop in those kinds of cycles as the tech and things change, and it's it's been great. It's been really great. And speaking of releases, uh, the features that we talked about today, is there a planned release date for those? Or is it kind of fuzzy right now? We are revealing here today, and that is all, all right. I see. So we're just getting a preview. There's no... Preview. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jason. Thanks I appreciate so your time. Yeah, great. Thank you. Special thanks to our sponsors for making our NAB coverage possible.